the fourteenth year of Chinjua. Chapter 66 Heavily Valued Faster than words could be spoken, that frigid murderous aura that soared to the sky was forcefully taken aback as a muffled sound of a strike was heard before him. Presumably, his counterpart had been forced to retract his momentum partway through, causing himself backlash. Li Man was now thinking that this was quite the easy hostage to use, but before he could grab Tang Fan by the neck, he felt a sharp pain on his back, making him scream. The one he had used as a shield was already gone. His wrist suffered a strong hit instead, which made him go numb enough to automatically release the dagger he held. In the span of a second, this situation had undergone a massive change. Li Man had a merchant's background, making his martial skill to be not any better than that of Tang Fan's else he would have been able to control his strength better when he swung his axe against them earlier. His two underlings were much more formidable than him but when faced with the Jin Yiwei's assault from all side, they struggled for a good minute before they had no option but to be captured. How come you are all here? Hands roughly bound behind him, Li Man glared at the man before him in disbelief. Fate played with people. The feeling he had just been giving to Tang Fan had instantly been turned back around onto him. A Jin Yiwei walked over and slowly pushed the stone door open. Under Li Man's staring eyes, Peng Chi let Qian Saner and the rest of the Jin Yiwei in calmly coming in from the outside. The door was shut once again. The threat of the encroaching monster had been just an illusion. Sui Zhou loosened Tang Fan's bonds himself and asked in concern, Are you all right? Yes. Tang Fan shook his head, then started looking all around. From what he could see of the setup, this large hall they were in was the heart of the Gong Noble's vault, the coffin in its center where the body was placed. The decor on said coffin confirmed Tang Fan's previous speculation that this was the grave of a pre-Qin dynasty noble. Due to this space being relatively large with anti-chambers mimicking the occupant's residence in life, Li Man's group having lit only one candle meant that aside from one tiny circular region around the flame, everywhere else was in utter darkness. Wherever one was, they tended to go towards the light and shun the dark, making it easy for them to subconsciously look towards where the candle was. As such, when their eyes looked anywhere else thereafter, they would have temporary blindness. Sui Zhou and the other had taken advantage of that, concealing themselves in the antechambers, holding their breath and then striking when Li Man had let his guard down. Even though Li Man had also figured that out, he still felt it impossible to believe. He had always been self-assured in his own arrangements, yet it seemed like he had repeatedly played right into Tang Fan's hands. This can't be. Our people clearly drew you all away. How did you run over here from there? Sui Zhou paid him no mind, instead looking at Tang Fan. Envoy Sui's brilliance and power are things thou art ne'er capable of fathoming, Tang Fan joked. A hint of amusement showed in Sui Zhou's eyes but once he turned back to Li Man, his face had resumed its cold, expressionless look. We more or less already knew this grave's layout before we came down here. No way. Li Man called out before he could finish. There was, of course, a reason he had said so. To prevent grave robbery in the entombing of nobility, even the craftsmen that helped construct the tomb would sometimes be killed. That no heirloom information would be left to be passed down was therefore a given. There had also been those like Sasso, who had created 72 faint burial mounds in order to confuse the later generations and completely prevent theft. The effectiveness of those was never guaranteed but everyone had done things like this since time immemorial regardless. Having a bit of caution was never wrong. This vault was right under eternal deep. Very few even knew of it, let alone its structure. Confronted with Li Man's expression that said I'm well read, you can't fool me. Tang Fan patiently gave him an explanation. Before I became an official, I traveled the land in my studies, once passing through the Shaanxi region, which has no lack of burial sites. The tombs of pre Zhou royals had been purportedly long dug out and plundered dry long ago but the pits and ruins of them are still there. From my observations, the standards of those pits were all pretty much the same. 
Eternal Deep only had two floors to its crypt, as was written in clear terms by our forebears. Yingzong of Song Dynasty was buried in a rush, so no secret passages could have been made. Even though you're not the real Ludaniu, it must have taken you great pains to draw us down here. Your words were not all lies, of course. They were at least half-truth. Qian Saner didn't lie either, so upon combining both of your statements, it wasn't hard to draw one conclusion, the so-called third floor of the crypt you two were talking about had to be a separate noble's tomb. That was why I kept the secret. After flipping through the county annals, I found that this place was the former site of the nation of Gong, classified as being within the Zhou Emperor's territory, a fief nation of the Zhou clan. In this tiny country, all the standards had to imitate those of the Zhou clan, and graves were no exception. So, you went off based on the layouts of the Zhou dynasty tombs you saw in Shaanxi, Li Man took over. Tang Fan nodded. Yes, but I was really just going off a poor imitation. The tombs can't all be copies of each other. Even if we knew the general layout, there would definitely be some differences in it. We couldn't have known where those grave mechanisms were, for example, but you all gave us a hand this time around. Li Man's voice was rough. What help? After we came down, there were only bits of valuables scattered around but no corpses. If it was said that the monster swallowed the meat and bones together, that would be understandable but from Qian Saner's account, we know that Li Kuei's group fought with the monster. There had to have been a hard battle in that time, meaning that the areas we passed through could not have been tidied up so neatly. Regardless of how vicious the creature is, it would definitely have left behind a stump of limb or chunk of torso or two. If something is abnormal, then something strange is behind it so it must be that the place was intentionally cleaned up by people in order to lead us downwards. Makes sense. What else? Since we were being deliberately led here, you would naturally safeguard your own safety before anything else and never get thwarted by the traps here. That was why Suijo and I could bring people down here without worries. Li Man scowled. When I tried to kill you just now, the monster started howling. Tang Fan hummed. Qian Saner. Having been called, Qian Saner quickly walked out from the darkness, gave Tang Fan a brown nosing smile, then put a hand up to his mouth. A sound that could cause one to shudder sounded out it was that ghostly wailing they had just heard. The eyes of Li Man and his two subordinates almost bulged out. Qian Saner puffed out his chest in a prideful manner. Stealing isn't my only talent. His vocal mimicry had been unmatched in the Yellow River Gang. He wouldn't have been brought along to help being the lookout by his master otherwise. Though it wasn't a huge help, it was handy at certain moments, like fooling Li Man's group, as a matter of fact. This was actually a very simple matter. Li Man had schemed to guide Suijos and company away while he got ready to pick them off, starting with Tang Fan and Yin Yuanhua. Against his expectations, the others had long made preparations by using his plotting against him by means of that White Lotus follower that had wanted to lead them away, they had instead gotten a feel for the mechanisms installed here. In addition to the prior preparations Tang Fan had made, they'd had a comprehension of the ground plan here before coming down, so as long as they went along for a bit, they wouldn't have been confused by these befuddling traps. And then, Tang Fan and Yin Yuanhua, who had just been following behind the Jin Yue, had vanished. Just as Tang Fan had a deep understanding of Suizhou, Suizhou had a deep understanding of Tang Fan. He had known that the other would definitely do all that he could to stall for time and wait for their rescue. The only issue had been exactly how they would cross paths. Thus, Suizhou had ordered Qian Saner to copy the cry of the monster, drawing Li Man's group over to the main hall. Such was how the previous scenario came to be. Li Man laughed aloud. I once heard Lao Li say that you're quite smart, solving cases like a god of justice. Now that I've seen it, you really haven't let your reputation down. I fell right into your hands from the beginning. My loss is no injustice. The Lao Li he referred to had been the former steward of the Li family. 
He used to have a good relationship with Tang Fan but was later burned alive in the Li family house. Tang Fan shook his head. This official doesn't feel the least bit of honor getting praised by you. Li Man sneered. Unfortunately, you've guessed wrongly. This isn't the headquarters of the White Lotus Society, just a branch temple at best. If you want to use this to get a promotion, I'm afraid you'll be disappointed. I'm not really disappointed. To not reciprocate favors goes against courtesy. I just confessed the ins and outs of what happened to you, so isn't it your turn now? Ask away. I'll say what I know. Li Man was straight to point, he seemed happy to answer all their question after finding he had no way to resist. With the Jin Yiwei watching him like hawks nearby, he had no desire in the least to test out their techniques. Tang Fan wasn't going to ask him about why he had shown up here and other such nonsense. That could all be left for later discussion. The most urgent topics right now were. How many White Lotus Society followers are hiding out here? Where are the others, apart from you three? And did you all set this monster free? We had about 30 to begin with but after randomly finding this place, the majority of us were lost in a fight with the monster. Now, there's only five left. Three are here, two are outside. They're the ones who were supposed to lead you all away. As for the monster, Li Man glanced at them all. That's a tomb guardian. Out of Li Man's tail, they came to learn that there was a passage connecting this vault and the Luo River, with a stone door in the middle that was opened and closed by a mechanism. Whenever the Luo River's water level dropped, the door would open, the tomb guardian would return to the Luo River and the door would close. Then, when the water level rose, the door would open again, where the tomb guardian would return to the vault from the river. The tomb guardian hadn't started out as a tomb guardian, of course. It had probably been some beast that had swum from the Yellow River to the Luo River, then had simply been used by the ancestors 2000 years ago as a guardian to prevent grave robbery. Li Man's group had been wanting to rob this tomb only to inadvertently find this nation of Gong Vault. Even though they all had been tossed into a crushing defeat with disastrous losses, there had been extremely abundant funerary tributes inside. Tossing away those bronze artifacts that they had believed held no worth, the gold, silver and jewels alone could be congregated together to stack up high in a side chamber. That sort of wealth was emotionally moving. Following the loss of the financial source that the South Side Gang had been, the White Lotus Society just happened to be in need of a large amount of supplemental income. Li Man's group had been eager to make contributions. After the loss of so many people, they had finally figured out the pattern to the Tomb Guardian's appearances, and tried to get the treasures together, preparing to smuggle them out. However, they had already invoked the ferocity of the Guardian, hence why, starting from a year ago, the people of Luo River Village had been hearing that bizarre crying from time to time that was being made by the Guardian. Tang Fan and them had already known that in order to discover the Wailing's source, the village had sent two batches of people out. The first six had gone and not returned. They had all believed that river gods were acting up but the truth was that the White Lotus Society had moved to silence them. Amongst the second batch had been bailiffs from the county capital, as well as the village's chief, and they had been led into a thief's cave. Li Man had originally wanted to use them as food for the guardian but he had feared that these people disappearing would draw more attention from the authorities, so he had intentionally released the already insane bailiff and the old village chief. After that, he had used the old village chief's grandson to threaten him, forcing him to feign madness and tell the people of the world that there were gods in the river. With that, everyone's attention would have been shifted away, thus causing them to not notice the thief's cave below, and giving Li Man's group more time to move the treasure. Yet, they could not have foreseen that Jian Sanus group of grave robbers would come excavating at that point in time and opened another entrance into the Song Tomb, and thus discover the nation of Gong Vault beneath it. What came after that could be completed with logic. Li Man and the rest had used the same method to get rid of the thieves, yet had overlooked Jian Sanur, the fish that had slipped the net by being outside. 
that had resulted in Tang Fan's group getting a lot of clues out of him, then going down themselves to slay the Tomb Guardian. None of this had been predicted by Li Man. Had these people arrived a few days later, he and the others would have fled with their loot without any hitches and then Tang Fan and Sui Zhou's group would have solely encountered the vicious Tomb Guardian once they descended. The calculations of humans were inferior to those of the heavens. Despite his complete plan, he hadn't been able to cover every base. A slight negligence in the finer details had turned into the cause of today's failure. He hadn't expected that the imperial ambassador the court would send would be his old acquaintance, Tang Fan. He also hadn't expected that with the huge pile of dead people preceding them, this group of people would still be willing to brave the dangers of the tomb, having no fear of death. He further hadn't expected that they would have long made ample preparations, even getting an approximate feel for the grave vault's layout prior to their descent. Having suffered a slice wound on his back, the feeling of blood loss was making darkness appear before him. After explaining all of that, his mouth became even more parched, and he felt weak all over. All of a sudden, Yin Yuan who raised his foot and viciously kicked him. Where did you hide away all those treasures? With his bound hands, Li Man got kicked to the ground out of nowhere, yet he wasn't angry, only panting harshly. If I tell, will you spare my life? Grudging that these guys had just hogtied him, Yin Yuan who sneered at that. You lot plan to rebel and cause chaos to the realm. Not killing nine generations of your family would be good enough as it is, yet you want to ensure your life. If you don't tell, you can just wait to lose that life here and now. Like he had heard a massive joke, Li Man immediately bust out laughing, the pain from his wound making his grin distorted. What are you laughing at? Yin Yuan who was shuddered from his laughing, but still wanted to kick him again, only to get stopped by Sui Zhou. Li Man laughed without restraint, tears even leaking out of his eyes. He gave Yin Yuan Hu an eerie smile. I'm laughing at your stupidity. I'm saying all that just to stall you so that I can live longer, but for all of you, your time of death is here. As if to collaborate with him, the second he said that, a strange wailing noise came from beyond the stone door. Everyone's expressions changed. He kept laughing. I said before that the tomb guardian moves with the scent of blood, and is most sensitive to its smell. My blood drew it over. You know everything that's gone on but you're still going to end up dying here. A banging sound came from outside the door, like some force was smashing against it. It was only probing at first but as the other party felt out how strong the door was, it used more force. The hall itself even shook a bit from the hits, much sand falling down in hisses. Li Man still laughed. The secrets of this place will remain concealed forever. None of you will be getting out. The back of his head was slapped hard by Peng Chi. Aren't you going to die here, too? Cut the shit and think of something. The other grinned evilly. The Holy Society's grace to me is as heavy as a mountain. Without it, there would be no wealthy Li Man. The time has come for me to repay that favor. If I can get this many of you buried with me, my death will be no loss. While he spoke, the stone door was struck hard again. The door relied on wit to be opened. For humans, that wasn't hard but for animals, the door was an impeding obstacle. However, the tomb guardian outside obviously had some wisdom in it, after discovering that its continuous strikes weren't working, it gradually stopped its offense and switched to other ways to try. Those inside the room had believed that even though they couldn't get out for the time being, the tomb guardian outside couldn't get in, either, so as long as they waited for a good amount of time, it would leave on its own after it lost patience. Yet, when they saw the door get slowly pushed open, they couldn't help but feel utter dread. A black claw as sharp as a bird's talon, yet several times larger than an ordinary one came searching through the crack in the door. With how strong the creature was, being snatched by such a claw would likely make one's head explode messily. That thought made everyone's hearts pound hard. Go and hold the door. Sui Zhou shouted. There was no need for him to say that really, 
as many had long since rushed forward to firmly block the gate with their bodies. Still, the force beyond was much too great, and everyone putting their tremendous strength into it was only barely enough to push the door back shut. Before they could sigh in relief, it was struck hard again. Many were still pressed against it and their limbs were shaken numb at once, leaving them powerless. Another hit came. And another. Yet another. Cannons at the ready. Sui Jo ordered. At that reminder, many remembered that they were still equipped with hand cannons. The Jin Yue carrying them quickly filled their insides with gunpowder, aimed at the door tensely, and waited solely for its collapse when it could no longer be held back. But ill events seemed to happen whenever they wanted to. Before they were fully ready, the stone could no longer withstand the massive force of the impacts, breaking into two chunks with a bang. It fell backwards, those without time to dodge getting crushed at once. Accompanying the complete destruction of the door, a burst of noxious fume struck them all in the face, the stench nearly making them vomit. The soul candle in the hall extinguished completely in its wake, too. Fortunately, before that had happened, Suijo had already ordered for four flame sticks to be lit and thrown into each corner, making it so that in this moment, they were at last able to see the face of the tomb guardian. Li Man had spoken of a black figure accompanied by stinking wind. The beast was not that tall but it was long and stout, with a long neck. Its entire body length was about three or four times that of a grown man's. It was covered in black scales, its ghastly white teeth and massive maw making its biting force clear to them all. Two blood-red eyes were embedded in its head raised high, which slowly turned to glare malevolently at everyone present, as if it was already taking them for a feast. It had scales and no horns but its limbs had claws. It resembled a snake, yet wasn't a snake, and was several times bigger than an alligator. A name suddenly flashed past in Tang Fan's head but that thing had originally been recorded in a book of oddities from the northern and southern dynasties. No one had spotted one in person for centuries. He was surprised to find one appear here today. He wasn't feeling a bit of excitement at seeing a creature of legend, however. The hall had turned into chaos from the monster's appearance. Its body was firmly blocking the doorway, with even the slightest movement of its head or tail stirring the humans up into disarray. A sharp spring gilt saber slashed down upon those black scales but they weren't chipped, while the saber that could be used to chop firewood was instead bent and curled. The beast's tail swept over. A Jinyue was instantly sent flying, after which he landed heavily upon the floor, his status unknown. Suijo took advantage of when the monster was contending with the others to leap onto its back. The creature appeared to be angered, opening its mouth and letting out a shrill cry it was not a roar but the ghostly wailing they had heard countless times before. The sound echoed around the stone chamber, causing one's ears to buzz and hairs to stand on end. Accompanied by a loud, dull boom, the gunpowder in the four cannons ignited, then exploded outwards, each summarily hitting the beast. However, under everyone's expectant watch, the monster's cry just got sharper as it became all the more irritated. With the momentum of a lightning bolt, it honed in on one of the Jin Yue with a cannon, then opened its putrid mouth. <laughs> the Jin Yue's scream abruptly cut off. His arm and half of his shoulder had been torn clean off, blood quickly spurting out of it and splashing onto the face of his unsuspecting comrade next to him. Everyone had to stop and blankly watch this spectacle. With such frightening offensive strength, all of them put together wouldn't even be its match. When they had heard Lee Man say that he had lost over 20 people, they hadn't taken that seriously but now, it seemed like his statement had not been an exaggeration at all. Another round. Sui Jo bellowed, snapping the staring people out of it. Peng Chi snatched the cannon out of the hands of a subordinate next to him, shouting, fill it. The next instant, the beast's tail thrashed over to them, and they had to tuck and roll with the cannon in hand, dodging desperately. Within this chaos, those without martial arts training like Tang Fan and Yin Yuan Hua could do nothing but dodge everywhere and do all they could to not add to the confusion for the Jin Yue. 
if they landed into trouble as well, even more people would be implicated. Seeing that the four flame sticks were about to go out, Tang Fan found some time to light more up and toss them around. On the other side, the cannons fired once more, striking the monster right on its tail. Flashes filled the air, giving off more dull sounds. Despite the beast's scales helping out and making it unafraid of firearms, the force of impact still made its enormous body quake. Snatching this extremely rare opportunity, Suijo, who had been trying hard to steady himself this whole time, jumped up the beast's body, raised his saber high, and pierced it right into one of its eyeballs. Hi Its screech sounded like a woman's howls. The enraged creature threw him off. Attack the abdomen, he shouted. The Jinyue raised their sabers and hopped up. By means of the monster's one blind eye, excruciating pain and disordered movements, the blades went to hack towards its stomach, the softest part of its entire body. In spite of the injured animal not being as nimble as it had been, its strength got even greater. Under its crazed flailing, the Jinyue couldn't get close at all. Many of them were even stepped on or slashed by the monster's claws, getting bones broken and spewing blood. The power of the two sides was not equal in the least. Even if they had the greater numbers on their side, this situation was as dangerous as ever. They had come here specifically to kill any monsters, hence why Suijo had gotten the cannons. In this day and age, having firearms was basically tantamount to being invincible, making even the Mongol cavalry a cinch but none of them had anticipated that even the cannons wouldn't have any effect on this beast. Their opponent was protected by an armor of scales, its only weak points were its belly and eyes. On top of that, it had no loss in agility despite its size, its attack power just as potent. It was hard for them to find chances to attack too, as that eyeball hadn't been ruined easily. Still, now that they knew its weakness, there was following hope for a resolution. That lone remaining eyeball was seen to glare more ferociously and bloodily than before. Roaring like mad in the hall, it waved its tail and claws, reaping living things wherever it went, like a sickle. Yin Yuan Hua was shaking against a wall. All of a sudden, those claws came slashing over he was deathly pale, staring blankly, forgetting to react. Right then, Tang Fan reached over and pulled him out of the way. Yin Yuan Hua stumbled, barely avoiding the claws, which acutely cut across the wall and left three deep gashes. Had he still been there, there would be a slashed open carcass there right now. He dazedly leaned against the wall to catch his breath, as if disbelieving that he had just escaped calamity. Go to an antechamber. Tang Fan hollered, a contrast to his typical elegance. He had just put a lot of strength into pulling Yin Yuan Hua away, his complexion currently not much better looking than the others. However, danger swiftly descended yet again. The tomb guardian appeared to notice that there were two humans that were easier to deal around. With a twist of its head, its giant mouth opened, its fangs close enough to touch. The time it took for Tang Fan to rescue Yin Yuan Hua, to the beast turning its head, was like an eternity passing in the blink of an eye. It was impossible for the guardian beast to chomp down on two people at once, its first target was Yin Yuan Hua. The man was as wan as ever, but his response time seemed to be a little faster now. It was too late to flee. The monster's figure was much bigger than them, and had already cut off their means of escape. Yin Yuan Hua finally reacted he elected to pull Tang Fan in front while hiding himself behind him, intending to use him as a meat shield to slow the monster's momentum, after which he would plot to flee. In this split second's worth of time, no one had expected that he would do something like this. There was no time for Tang Fan to avoid it. He watched as his shoulder was apparently about to be bitten off like what happened to a Jin Yue before him, but the glint of a saber flashed before his eyes as the beast's teeth came down upon a saber. Suijo. At this critical moment, Suijo had dashed over to provide aid, using his spring gilt saber to block the beast's momentum. The saber caused the beast's soft mouth to be stained with blood. It furiously bit on the blade, then gave it a vicious flick, 
immediately slamming Sui Jo against the wall. The latter fell down hard, spitting out a mouthful of blood. Huang Chuan. Tang Fan threw himself over to help him up, eyes so wide, they were about to split open. Sui Jo's complexion was like Joss paper, his eyes shut tight. His internal organs had likely suffered injury as he didn't even have the strength to speak for a time. The warm body in Tang Fan's arms was very close but in that second, he felt the fear and uncertainty that he was about to lose him. In the first half of his life, his parents had passed early and his older sister had married far off. He had believed himself to be alone in the world, worry-free, uninhibited. He had believed that if he couldn't handle being an official, he could just hang up his cap and leave, and that there was nothing in this world that he couldn't let go of. It was only now that he realized how heavily he valued this man in his heart so heavily, he couldn't bear the thought of losing him. Right then, Yin Yuan Hua noticed that the monster had come away from the doorway, and couldn't help but be delighted, running out without delay. Seeing this, Peng Chi shouted, This monster is too strong. We need to draw back, then find troops and... He didn't get to finish, as a horrible scream came from outside the door. It was Yin Yuan Hua. Before anyone could react, a head flew inside, spinning as it rolled on the ground. Yin Yuan Hua had died with his eyes open. There's another one outside. Pang Chi sharply shouted. Inside the passageway and shrouded with dense darkness, unknown perils looked to be buried. This one alone was hard enough to deal with, yet there was another one. These beasts were so sly. One swept the inside while another kept watch outside, firmly confining them here with no escape. A dark shadow rose up in everyone's hearts. Right. Li Man had only said that the tomb guardian existed, not that there might be more than one. Tang Fan realized that he himself had made a miscalculation. He had underestimated Li Man. Because the man had fallen into his hands last time, he had regarded the man as a typical villain. Little had he known that behind his seemingly defeated confession, he had kept many things hidden. If the White Lotus Society's true power was actually that weak, how could the court be having such trouble in completely getting rid of it? Li Man had probably anticipated these circumstances long ago, awaiting all of their deaths here. And what of Li Man himself, now? At this moment, he was making use of this chaotic scene, where no one was paying attention to him. He had run to the coffin, and was attempting to push its lid off with his upper body. End chapter